Oh, completely missed my face then. <laughs> Good morning everyone. Oh my gosh, it is Monday and it feels like I have not spoken to you in forever. Okay, my goodness me. I had the whole weekend um, to just chill actually at home. I'm having some issues with my shoulder at the moment. I don't know if I've mentioned it on my vlog, but I used to tense my jaw and then I got Botox in my jaw and now it feels like I just go like this instead. And so I'm really like struggling with it. I remember I had a massage not long ago. And um, I never say anything about like where I hold tension nowadays to um, the therapists that I have. And the lady finished my massage and she was like, wow, that's some serious tension that you have there. I was like, ah, okay. And now it's really kind of like, I think I need to maybe have some regular sessions on my um, shoulder. But I've got to grips with the Victoria Beckham bits and pieces. And quite honestly, guys, I I am obsessed. I have honestly found my dream bronzer in this and also the thing that I love the most about this is that it has given me the opportunity to wear eye makeup because this bronzer does not irritate my eyes. I've been wearing this every single day and my eyes are completely fine. They're not getting itchy or irritated. So I'm using this as like a, a lovely autumnal eye and the other day I was wearing it and Carrie looked at me and she goes, oh, your eyes look so blue. And I'm thinking that maybe it is the combination of this bronzer, which I've actually been using number three more than I have been using number two. Um, so perhaps number two is a little bit too pale, but the pairing of number two with the Cacao uh, Victoria Beckham eyeliner has been a match made in heaven for just my lovely sort of warm autumnal daytime eye. Just nothing fancy, I take a little bit under the eye. I'm honestly, I'm sl slow. I'm so slapdash with this and I think that, I don't know about you, but when I'm sometimes watching makeup tutorials, I'm like, that looks great, I could never achieve it. I want to just be able to sort of throw something at my face and get a good look. And this is quite possibly the easiest eye look. Like, look, I'm not even, I mean, you know, makeup artists everywhere will be having hernias. But for me, I want something that's easy, that looks lovely, and obviously lovely and seasonal as well, which is very, very exciting um, because this feels warm, sort of a little bit spicy. I love it. Um, so that's literally what I do. Then I take the pencil, which Cinnamon was the one that she was going on about quite a lot, but this one I just you can see, oh, you can't see because uh, we're out of focus. It's me, I'm the main event, focus on me. There we go. Yeah, I just press into the, the lash line just a little bit and then I flick it out like so. Just to create a little tiny wing. Again, not too sort of fancy with it and then I use the little rubber majig and smoke it out a little bit, push it in, really sort of give it less of a uniformed feel, like so. And then I might just go back in and darken it up a little bit, like so. And that is literally how I've been doing my eyes. I could probably lift that wing a little bit because it's probably a little bit. But that is it. My little autumn eye look, so easy. Two products and obviously then I'm using my Swede mascara, which is the um, Cloud Mascara in black. Um, and that is my day to day. I mean, you can obviously make it really dramatic by going in with a little bit of eyeliner on the uh, waterline. I always do this really gently because otherwise I think it can look like a bit intense, but yeah, it just makes it pop. So I'm gonna do the other eye and um, finish off my makeup. But yeah, these two products paired with my mascara have been my sort of favorite autumn eye makeup edition. And I know I only ordered it a few weeks ago, um, but I showed you it when I, when I unboxed it. And so I kind of wanted to give you a bit of a lowdown that I'm very happy. I actually haven't used the eyeshadow quad yet though, but then I only tend to wear sort of really proper eyeshadow looks when I'm doing events. So maybe I'll get a chance to do it this week. Um, but I wanted to sort of jump straight in with this vlog and sort of catch up a little bit because it feels like, I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes I get into this rhythm of vlogging and 
the world and life just seems to go so quickly and especially obviously this last month October was a whirlwind like an actual whirlwind with evergreen and everything like that um I just need to get some better light on this side so I'm gonna turn this way um but yeah it, it's been a bit of a whirlwind with evergreen I've got another book signing this week uh which I actually haven't like pushed on my socials so that's going to be a strange experience for me but we shall see how that goes um I'm going to that tomorrow but yeah no I I feel I feel like I'm a little bit out of sorts I've fallen out of my um routines a lot like I had this really lovely routine where I was getting up at the same time every single day if I wasn't working out I was walking if I wasn't working out and going for a dog walk I was at least going for a dog walk and then my ritual would be to go and see the hens the hens actually were out in the garden this morning because we topped up their bedding you know I, I was eating well and taking care of myself and I definitely feel like that sort of it generally does tend to slip a little bit when I'm busy but because it was honestly just such a whirlwind I feel like things have really taken a back seat in terms of like taking care of myself just the joy in which I was taking to sort of create my dinners and things like that. And I think now that the frosts have, it, have been, there's a fair amount of parsnips in my beds that I want to be enjoying and I want to make parsnip soup. So yeah, I just kind of want to get back on my groove with things because I feel a little bit like I've sort of neglected the areas of my life that make me the happiest at the moment. And, uh, so I kind of want to reset that in the run up to Christmas because there's a lot of things on a day to day basis I should be doing. And one of those things is really like getting some good food in me. I think there are a few comments on my last video about my weight at the moment. And if you know anything about me, if you've been here for a while, when things get intense and stressful and, you know, I have big events, I generally, my weight just plummets. And it was a bit of a month last month. Obviously, you know, we lost... Ali's gramps and that was you know obviously awful for Ali but in in at the forefront awful for Ali um, I don't think I realized how much sort of seeing him sad would affect me in that sense so it was I think probably played a part in that um like behind the scenes stresses and then evergreen like I, I was so nervous for the launch and so nervous for um doing the event because the event felt really out of my comfort zone and just lots and lots of bits and pieces so yeah I think it's time to get back on the sort of straight and narrow with things and of course in the run-up to Christmas I'm already planning and I've booked in my Christmas install so I need to start getting my house organized and things filed away and all of those bits and pieces just get everything everything in line so that is going to be the plan of action for the most part today although I do have some bits and bobs I need to film something I need to um, watch tonight's video and I need to crack on I can't quite believe it but the sun is setting in fact it is almost dark outside and I am only just getting around to showing you what I've been wearing today now you might think this is weird that I have a full-blown outfit on to work from home it's a Monday and Mondays for me are really, really important. And I'm just going to zoom you out because I've realised we are very, very close for comfort. Um, but yeah, Mondays for me are a really important day. Um, when it comes to getting things done, there's a reason why I have a PT session on a Monday at 6am and I don't tend to miss it because it really sets me up in order to get everything done that I want to get done and like just have my mind in the right place. It's such a psychological thing part of my weird things that my brain needs to do is get dressed for the day and when I mean, when I say get dressed that doesn't mean just put on like any old thing in order for me to feel like my best and fire on all cylinders I have to get like properly ready as if I was going for a job anywhere else obviously boots aren't always necessary but I've been in and out all day and um they make me feel nice and I am astonished by how many people find that super weird but I very early on drew this correlation between my productivity, proactivity, and how I feel during the day. And I have to say the psychological impact of me staying in my pajamas was really tangible. And so I started treating my days when I was working from home 
just like any day I was going into into the office. And sometimes that can be a bit strange for me because sometimes I don't need to get my makeup done for the day or get dressed for the day because I'll be filming something. It kind of throws me off balance, but also um, it means that I often get ready like in the middle of the day sometimes. And again, that, that throws me off balance. One of the things I struggle with is not having the same routine. And so, yes, this is one of the things that I think people think is most bizarre about me. And when I do it, I think it is a bit of a unique thing about me in that I don't know whether it just, I don't know whether it just kind of sets people off. But whenever I do videos where I'm like work from home outfit, I always get comments that are like, wow, I usually wear my pajamas or uh, tracky bottoms and, you know, a, an old hoodie. And I'm always like of the mindset, I'm kind of like, Honestly, if that works for you, if that like in if if you're able to keep your mind psychologically in work mode and be like that, I'm jealous of you. Genuinely, I'm jealous because this is such a um, it's such a huge factor for me that I get up and I get ready. And I wish it wasn't. I wish I was one of those people that could just be like comfortable staying in their pajamas and working and just cracking on like that. I am genuinely envious. But for me, it's gotta be like this. And sometimes in my get ready with me videos, I'll often be like, if you wanna wear it to work, you can grab a pair of shoes and a bag and people will be like, why are you wearing a bag on a work from home outfit? And I'm like, does this not make sense in anybody else's mind or is it just mine? <laughs> because surely if you're working from home and your ethos is that you get up and you get ready as if you're going to work every day, that outfit should hypothetically translate perfectly into going to work in a normal office setting and so you just grab a pair of shoes and a bag and you're good to go maybe my brain just doesn't think like other people's brains i mean i don't like to think that i'm i'm certainly not the most academic but sometimes i'm like is it am i alone in this please let me know in the comments down below tell me that there are some kindred spirits in the comments that you have to do this too because sometimes I feel like is there a place for me on the internet when my brain works like this because I just I don't know so on that note the boots would obviously be my I'm going to work uh, essential and if I was going to team a bag because what I've done is I've got a, a little cotton shirt underneath and then I've popped this beautiful cashmere jumper from Lily Silk which you're gonna see when I want to get comfy in front of the fire in a minute, because I've got loads of things to do and I want to cozy in front of the fire. This is gonna transition into a loungewear outfit right before your eyes like magic. But if I wanted it to transition into a work outfit, I'd add a coat, a really lovely coat, probably my herringbone Amelia Wickstead coat or something like that. And I'd add a bag and I'd go for this one. Just to add a little bit of warmth and definition, I think this would be my outfit for going to work. And isn't that funny? And then now that I'm finishing up my work for the day and actually now it's all just kind of Christmas life admin things, I'm gonna show you how this transitions perfectly into a loungewear outfit. Let's do it. And I intend on giving you the goods. Don't say I don't treat you, but I'm getting ready to cozy down on the, uh, in front of the fire because it is actually starting to get cold. It was not that cold this morning, but it is cold now. I was sat downstairs and uh, my goodness me so into the cozies into the comedies and this again this is like part of it like it gets to what's the time now five o'clock just gone five o'clock and um as you can see just gone five o'clock and this is all part of it in in terms of like working from home and i think before lockdown i think i felt like that was such a bizarre thing like not many people work from home but obviously since covid i know a lot more people are working from home even the girls in my team now a lot of them work from home and this like ritual of taking my mind out of work mode and having those things that I do when I've been working all day in the house. By the way, just wanna say, I'm not saying this to sound like I work really hard. I think everybody has like processes in place that help their work-life balance, um, just productivity, proactivity, and this is definitely one of mine. So now time to get into the cozies and I have these lily silk Cashmere, jump, uh, cashmere bottoms, which are my absolute favorite. And they match this jumper, which is also from Lily Silk. Um, but I'm gonna keep the shirt on because I think it's gonna look really nice. Okay. <laughs> this is the quality content that you come to my channel for. But hey, if you're looking for someone for bougie comfies, I'm your girl, okay, I am your girl. But that is me, day to night, 
work to casual, work to personal life in a nutshell and this makes me feel so happy. Now I need to make dinner. I just messaged Ali, he's gone and he's picking up a suit that he's had made at New and Lingwood. And um, yeah, so he's had a suit made and I think he wants to wear it for his brother's wedding. And um, so I'm making dinner for myself this evening and I think seeing as Halloween is out of the way and seeing as fireworks night is out of the way, it's definitely time to crack in to some roasted crown prints and I think that's what I'm gonna do. I messaged Carrie because I don't have any harissa paste, so I'm just gonna make a little concoction and um, have myself some roasted pumpkin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna marinate some, some crown prints and finally get into those. I've got some smaller ones and I've got some bigger ones, so I think I'm gonna do a smaller one seeing as Ali is still in London and I am not waiting. And whilst that roasts, I can get on with Christmas card planning and decoration planning and get everything finalized. I really feel like I'm like, on a good trajectory at the moment, even though I can't say that word, evidently. Oh, <laughs> another part of the evening ritual, which someone just sent me something about someone that had done like a wintering post and like how wintering, you actually like throughout winter need two more hours sleep to feel rested because it is like a hibernation. And uh, this is my wintering attire <laughs> because I need it too. I can usually get up earlier in winter time because I'm going to bed so much earlier and it just feels really good. But yeah, anyway, let's get Crown Prince roasting. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm sorry. Barkley is just, he is like the ruffian of the house. He's just, look at him. Bordy. Bordy's getting birthday beats. Barkley, calm down. He like gets Porter's foot in his mouth. Yeah, gets his throat. Never does it, never does it hard. He's always just like gumming him, but... Happy boy! Bless you. Porty, is it your birthday this week? <laughs> not yours, Barkley, you just had yours. However, one thing I'm not going to do is cook without an apron on when I'm wearing cashmere. No, no, that is something I'm not going to do because this might end up not being too messy, I don't think, but just in case. <laughs> so what we're going to need is a fairly good sized crown prints. And I'm going to leave the skin on. I'm gonna cut it into like wedges. I'm gonna marinate it in the sauce and roast it so it goes all caramelized on the edges. The last time I did this, I didn't roast it for long enough. So we're gonna see how this goes. Um, what are you doing there? It is not your dinner time just yet. You still have 40 minutes, okay? Fantastic. So, where's my phone? We need olive oil, ooh, mon dieu. Olive oil, paprika, cumin, and coriander, my two least favorite spices. Yeah. Not a fan, but we're gonna give it a go. Bowl. And trusty little porcelain measurers, which just make life a lot easier. So I always feel like I can't trust actual cutlery. So, one tablespoon of olive oil. A teaspoon of garlic. Teaspoon of paprika. Half a teaspoon of ground cumin, which Honestly, not my fave, but we're going with it. And half a teaspoon. Oh, my goodness, I hate this. Salt and pepper, of course. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a schmick. Right, put that to one side before I do anything. Look at the inside of my, I can't believe I grew this. This is from my kitchen garden. Can you believe that? I can't. Can you? No, I can't. Oh dear. I might do, I might put this in a bowl, just for now, in case. Oh, it smells so good. Like it's such a good smelling pumpkin. Perfect. 
then you just slice it into wedges, which is no bad. Hmm. I'm going to save that other bit of the pumpkin for tomorrow, I think, because I think this will be enough. Half a pumpkin will be enough for me. Let's coat everything. Mm -hmm. Three second roll. And then I'm literally just coating every bit of the crown prints. I'm going to take a sprinkle of salt and pepper. I like salt. Right. 200 degrees and a baking tray. And then what you do is I just pop it on. I haven't made this in ages, by the way, so I'm making it sound like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. I get all of the last bits of the sauce and just kind of paint it on. Et voila! The squash is in the oven now. I'm gonna roast it for about half an hour to 40 minutes. I'm gonna pop all of these away and I am actually going to prepare on my other baking tray the seeds and I'm gonna make them into like a little snack with butter and salt by the sounds of things. So, never done this before, but let's get them washed and marinated, ready to go. So let's just get them all separated so that we can wash them in here going to be an interesting process, I feel, because there's a lot of goop. But I know that this will be something that I'm happy that I did. Obviously, I could save the seeds and plant them to for next year, but um, I like the idea of eating them. And do you know what? I really feel like I haven't done enough of this this year. I think with everything with the book, and it's just been one of those years where I've really felt like I haven't I haven't made the most of my kitchen garden and I don't know if anyone else feels the same but I've just been so I almost feel like I've been a bit preoccupied and I think what I'm going to try and do this weekend is actually spend some time clearing and also getting up some of the veg that I grew because Ali and I were talking today about Christmas dinner and obviously we have Christmas dinner at our house um, as a family and it honestly like can't believe that I can't believe that I'm like now in that position where I'm like having my little family <laughs> so yeah we were talking about it today last year we had a delivery from Piper's farm so what we're trying to do is get on top of things and plan our Christmas lunch properly and get that ordered now but also have like our uh, Brussels sprouts, there's these beautiful little bacon bits that you can get from there that we're going to have with the homegrown Brussels sprouts, but we haven't even tried them yet, even though they were absolutely ravaged by the um, butterflies, they have actually grown quite well, they just didn't grow as beautifully as I hoped. What I did, I let the cauliflowers that I grew, because they just got ravaged, I let them be the sort of focal point for the, cat for the um, white butterfly ujimi thingy and uh, I think that they helped as a distraction so that the Brussels sprouts didn't actually get ravaged. Gosh there's so many isn't there? And the thing is is I'm like that person that when something says like wash the seeds I'll be like there with a brush so I like you know like when people that cook properly and like chefs and things like that they they, they, just, they know that you just give it a rinse or something but I'm like there scrubbing it with a bloody Home. You just know this is going to make about a bag of, um, <laughs> of pumpkin seeds and I'm just going to sit there being like, well, I can't eat them. There's not enough. I can't eat them. I just got to look at them. I also get like that. When I grow something, I'm so precious of them that I'm then like, I don't want to eat them. No, it took so much effort to grow them. I don't want to eat them. You're hearing all of my intrusive thoughts now. I'm in one of those moods where I'm like sharing them. I think I might have got the majority of them. Right, wash. So 
that's good, as I was thinking. I was going to be doing this all evening, but I need to leave them to dry. They roast best when they are dry. These are drying on a paper towel. And actually I have decided I'm going to save some of these seeds because there's just not a lot here. So I'm just going to roast them, eat them and enjoy them. But I'm going to keep about 20 seeds when they're all dried. And I'm going to see if I can get my crown prince to grow again next year. Um, I've got little cute hessian bags and moving segueing on perfectly into this next part actually that's a complete lie i do this all the time and it's my toxic trait when i'm in the kitchen i get excited about other things and i don't finish the job that i'm doing so hold that thought pumpkin seeds segueing into the next bit but i need to wrap this bit of the crown prince so that we can have this tomorrow for dinner and i'm using our little uh wax bee preservy thingies I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. These were Ali's Christmas present. These are his Blenheim forge knives. And we have to take extra special care of them. And uh, they have a special cleaning routine. They've got a skincare routine that's more high maintenance than mine. Uh, but they're very, very lovely to use. Um, segwaying. So, what I'm gonna do with those is obviously keep those seeds for myself to see if I can grow them, because it's not really enough. And I think that gifting crown prince seeds, as lovely as they are to gift, they're quite a commitment to growing. And I think what I like to do is gift seeds that introduce people into potentially growing things, which I think it's easier if it's just on your windowsill. It kind of uh, snowballs from there. Um, so that's, that's going in at the deep end. Uh, maybe if it was an experienced gardener, I might gift them then, but you'll know that we were um, having some seed labels and uh, stamps and stickers and things like that done so that when we do gift people things, we can use them on things. It's just a little investment. There's one for our honey, one for anything that comes from my kitchen garden. Say if I take someone a, a bouquet of salads, um, seeds, anything, eggs, all of that stuff. And I got my first instalment. Now, just to say, I paid for these in full. Um, and so this is the stamp on one of the labels. And this is gonna be super handy for like stamping egg boxes until we get all of the stickers done. Um, we had them printed and I don't think we're quite like at the point where I've got the texture because I've got this really lovely Jo Malone fragrance, which is their sweet pea, their English pear and sweet pea. And it's got this like linen texture on the label and I wanted that and I also think that the colour of the, the back of this is, is still not quite right so I think I'm going to try and find someone to print them here in the UK instead and just get, um, get them so that I can just keep repeat ordering them. I want them to be a really nice thing because we put a lot of love into the things that we produce from our garden and I want it to feel quite special when we gift it. Even though honestly I, when I tell you that people like just don't know what to do with themselves when you um, gift them something that you grew or that came from your garden. It is like a joy that I have never experienced. I took um, some eggs for um, a lady that I had a meeting with last week and when I told her that I had given her three eggs from my hens, she was like, no way. And I was listening to something the other day I can't remember, please tell me in the in the comments down below where I heard this. It might have just been a little thing on um, TikTok or something, I don't know. A gentleman I was listening to, his neighbor shoveled all of the snow off of his driveway and to say thank you, they took him round something from their garden that they'd like grown. And the response from the man who shoveled their driveway was like almost, he was like almost in tears. And that was a moment of realization that like, it's not necessarily always the extravagance. Sometimes it's your neighbor helping you shovel the snow off your drive, or sometimes it's just taking something round for your neighbors just to say, you know, I thought of you, or I thought you'd like this, or this is just for you. And that's what I love about gift giving. I think I've really changed my approach. And that is something that we're changing this year, our whole entire approach to gift giving is changing i'll tell you about it later but this plays a part but yes yeah, so i need to get these um 
just slightly different because they're a bit shiny at the moment and I want that sort of um, really textured finish and I, I want to get this colour right because it's a little bit purpley at the moment and we want it to be a bit more blushy, if that makes sense. Um, I can show you it in action. Here's one I prepared earlier. Now we also have these little linen uh, tops for them. I think I might do a green linen though and then little rope bits but we've got these labels and the stamp and it's just so lovely to have like the first iteration of this. Um, we've got lots more stickers that we want to, to order um, and just have so that we can just repeat purchase whenever we run out so that we can take lovely gifts like Chutney to people that we're going to visit, gifts, whatever. So yeah, that was my segue. I'm really hungry. Almost ready to dish up and you will notice that we have our new plates that are actual plates and not charger plates. Um, this is the only order we've made since we did our first order with Sophia Ceramics and I would say that I feel like she's like stepped up in the world and she's a bit more like polished and I kind of liked it when it was a little bit more rustic. These feel like a, like quite perfect now, whereas before they felt they had that more like handmade feel, but they are really lovely still. I can't even deny what, what, what the brand does is incredible. I just like it a little bit wobbly and a little bit imperfect. But anyway, dinner's almost ready, almost ready to dish up. I'm gonna serve it with jasmine rice and a dollop of yogurt, just because as much on there as humanly possible and there might just be enough for Ali to have some too. By the way, I'm only saying that because he wasn't supposed to be home for dinner. He said he wasn't gonna be home for dinner and then he's just messaged me, so I think there might be enough. And I'm just going to add yogurt this is just greek yogurt nothing fancy i might add a little bit more salt to the yogurt because i love salty yogurt and that is a very very delicious looking dinner if i do say so myself oh my gosh i'm so hungry i'm just not even going to tell you about it Lumi, hello gorgeous girl you always join us at dinner time a little bit of salt. I just want to show you that this is what is left of my wild berry and bramble Jo Malone candle that I treated myself to at the beginning of autumn. And I know that technically we're still in autumn because obviously it's November and it won't be winter until, well, technically winter until December. However, as you know, things start getting very festive around here very early. And I would say that for me, I don't know, I know I've done it quite a lot on this channel where I buy like loads and loads of candles in bulk and admittedly, um, how do I put this? Um, sometimes I get a bit carried away. And I understand that about myself and I can understand that that would be quite triggering to a lot of people. Especially when candles can be so expensive, like that one was a hundred pounds and I wasn't gonna go and buy loads of them, um, but I still wanted to experience them in my house. And so I've managed to make this one beautiful candle last and it doesn't feel like I've scrimped on it in any way, shape or form. And so, um, yes, perhaps this is the start of turning over a new leaf when I'm not quite so like, I just maybe don't get quite so carried away with things and it was really lovely having that one candle, treasuring it, using it, because I have this other thing where I don't use the candles. If I've got only one, I'm like, no, you can't burn it. That's what you do with a candle. Like my joke, my, uh, the Holland Cooper one that I've got now, once that's finished, I'm going to be burning the Holland Cooper candle and I know what I'm like. I'm gonna be like, I don't wanna do it, I don't. But yeah, I think in the early days of this career, I think because of obviously like both Ali and I 
we were very, very normal individuals in terms of like career. He was an electrician. I worked as a very, very basic level e-commerce manager at a men's fashion brand. And um, I think it's very easy to get lost and also feel like you've got to keep up and you've got to do certain things and you've got to be first and you've got to be the best and sometimes that maybe makes you lose sight of things and so this was my autumn even though obviously my my installs I'm <laughs> I can't rein those in guys okay I love them <laughs> and they've become a real part of like living and enjoying and cherishing life and the seasons but there are certain areas where I can definitely do a lot better and be a bit more you know not silly and so this felt very good for me I don't know what I'm telling you about this this might come across really badly but I just wanted to share <laughs> oh hello <laughs> Tommy <gasps> Bordy's coming Bordy's coming Bordy's coming right boys are you ready for cozying by the fire and doing Christmas chores I think so. Excuse me, you're in the way. You are in the way. Always. Move. Come on, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. The next thing that I've got to do is finalise our Christmas cards. And what we've decided to do this year, we sort of ummed and ahed about a lot of things. Um, but we've decided on actually turning one of Diane Sutherland's uh, illustrations into our Christmas cards in a personalised way. So the wreath that I loved so, so much we're actually going to be using for our Christmas cards this year. Are you two? No. And what I was thinking was using the wreath in her black pencil drawing. Excuse me. And then... You make my life very difficult. So using this wreath from my book and then having um, you know, season's greetings or Merry Christmas uh, from the Mill and Gordons underneath. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this in a well-lit area without grout <laughs> fighting baby seals and I'm going to put the typography in place and then the typography is going to be foiled and embossed into the card. So I think that'll look really nice but also um, a bit different. So yeah. That's what, my, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to grab a picture, even though I have a sausage dog on my lap. It's not quite that point yet. After I've done this, we can sit on the sofa and go through all of Gemma's notes about Christmas and plan everything. Everything. We can do our mood boards. We can do everything. Can I get up? Do you have to do this on top of So this, this is the thing with them. It's like they want to wrestle on top of me. It's the most bizarre thing they get this moment in the evening where they don't just want to wrestle about the house they want to wrestle whilst being on top of me thankfully they have just vacated the area so i'm going to make a swift escape there i am trying to get the perfect shot whilst it is almost well it is pitch black outside and i've realized i've got the digital copy of the book so all i need to do is go to the page number and and I can find the wreath and I can screen grab it from the book and do it that way. So where does this right joy of decorating? Of course it does. There we go. Ready and waiting for me to do this job. Perfect. So I have had a little bit of play around and again I did this in stories on Instagram. Um, I just loaded in the wreath and then put my usual typography that I use on Instagram 
um, into the chat box, although I will likely use the uh, fonts that I use on my blog when you see it on my slides for YouTube videos and blog posts and things like that. Um, sorry for the lines. I might just pop, pop this picture on screen instead. But yes, this is, I think, the design we're going to go for. So it says Merry Christmas from the Mill and Gordons. However, there was another design um, with putting it in the middle, but I think because the wreath isn't entirely sort of symmetrical because of this asymmetrical uh, uh, feather design, I think we're going to go with this one. And this isn't going to be grey uh, in real life. This will have the gold foiling on it. And I just think it's so beautiful and paired back. Um, but maybe we need to think more about um, what colour the card will be. Do we go with sort of an off-white ivory? I think that will work really, really nice. Um, just really beautiful card quality. Um, yeah, I'm a sucker for beautiful like papers and textured stickers. It's just such a thing for me. I love that, that whole entire thing. So yeah, really got to nail the card on this. I'm supposed to be doing Christmas stuff. Are you? Yeah. What, in this video? Christmas planning. Well, I've just done the Christmas cards. However, Ali is home and he went and had a Nando's on my own. On his own. Used to. Despite. There's quite a lot of people go in and say, can I have a table for one? And I nearly said, when this lad was in front of me, I nearly went, did you want to share a table? Aww. And I didn't, because I thought he probably doesn't want to share a table. <laughs> but um, I just said to Ali if he would help me polish my boots for tomorrow. And um, he's helping me. Yeah. I've got shiny Definitely. boots, because Ali's got all of this stuff. So one of these you got for Christmas, didn't you? Which um, one did you get for Christmas? This one, from me. Yeah, we can use a little bit of, is that black? Yeah. Sophia Madaido Zero One Noir Creme 1925. So this is basically the equivalent of like, it's not kind of like a polish, but it's also like hydrating. So it will help hydrate the leather. Amazing, because this is like, my boots are the best leather, they're like box leather, and they're just super shiny and they always look really, really you sleek. Sure that's the best? Uh, in my opinion, box leather is the best. So. Why do you dab like that? Huh? Why so, do to make sure I'm spreading it around as evenly as possible. Gosh, you're going to make me want to start polishing my boots up myself, aren't, aren't you, doing this? Would you say that the Sophia stuff is the best? Sophia Madaido? Yeah. Yes. I mean, there may be some really, really like high-end products, but as far as I am aware, all of the top shoe manufacturers that I follow, Gatsiala, Gatsiala and Girling, they use it. Crockett and Jones use it. Churches, Joseph Cheney and Son. Wow, you've got quite the setup in here. So the great thing about this is mm -hmm. you can do these bits as well. You see these little scuffs there. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing that I always get upset about because I'm like, oh, I love my shiny boots, and now you should have shoe trees. Boots. I do. Yeah, for, for, for these. I'll put them in there tonight. I've, I've been buying the wooden ones, and I really, really like them. The only thing is, with knee-high boots, when you polish them, if you sit on anything white, the polish comes off on the fabric. Uh, oh. I can't say I've ever worn them to know. No, you don't wear knee high boots. <laughs> Shall I get you some well, shoe trees? I don't just leave these like this. Okay. So what we do is we put this this on. I'm just gonna go get you some shoe trees. So you, we can leave this for like 15 minutes. Right, okay, so it goes a bit more matte, doesn't it, when you first put it on? Correct. And then you just, you buff it so, in? Yeah, so this will help nourish and also add a tiny piece of color, mm -hmm. but not much. Um, yeah, it just kind of makes the black look a bit blacker, doesn't it? Yeah, just kind of like any anything that's sort of like lost or been scuffed, it kind of helps get rid of any scuffs. Just a question. You know in like the Burlington Arcade? Yeah, that's where I was second ago. Yeah, and they have those people that are like shining shoes. Yes. I could go to one of those with my boots. Absolutely, yeah. Because they're not just for men. Oh, I've not brushed this first. They're not just for men, absolutely not. In fact, you'd probably like to take on a big boot like this. The thing what I've noticed is, is if, if you do like a real good 
polishing session on a boot, in my experience, it takes very little upkeep to keep them. Go and have a look at the, all my boots at the bottom. Like, you think I wear them all the time at the moment? And look at all of them. Look how shiny they are. Because all I do is, when I come in after a night out, I just get a horsehair brush and I just- I know, I hear you. It takes me about, you know, five minutes max. So you've got a good, Routine in yeah, place. Keep everything looking oh, I might have. Do you know what? I might have to do this as well because I love my boots looking. All you need to do is just get a brush like this. Mm -hmm. We can use this kit. But well, no, I'll get my own kit. So that well, actually, I've got a brush for you. You can have. Okay. And all you do is you just say you keep that in your cupboard. Yeah. Every time you come home, just go like that, and this will pull out a shine and get rid of any unwanted bits that you've picked up. And it just kind of refreshes them. So what's that brush called? So this is a horsehair brush. Horsehair brush. Um, like horse mane. It's not their fur. Yeah. Soft. Yeah. You see the bottom bit? Yeah. Yeah, That's that needs a proper like. You can, I've got this little tool here. So, not so. And not, it's not really, really needed on yours, but what you can do is you can oh, wow. so dab okay. that in there. And you can really like just get in the creases. Yeah, and then you can go go around this. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, I, lo oh, I love that. Because there will still be like product on here. Mm -hmm. If you were to come tomorrow morning and just give these another quick brush, mm -hmm. they'll probably even shine up a bit more. Have you polished that one? No. Ah, I thought not. Well, I have kind of, but not put. So this has had, cr this has had cream on it, mm -hmm. which is the nourishing yeah. product. Wow, look at the difference. And that's been, and so that's been put over the whole boot, yeah. the cream, because obviously we're trying to rehydrate the leather. Mm -hmm. I've then given it a quick brush off with wow. the horsehair brush. Oh no, sorry, this has had one top coat of wax. That's why it's um, Yeah, it's really matte. matte. So you, the boot here, see where it's a bit shinier? Yeah. That's had cream on it, okay. yeah? Yeah. And the bottom bit's had wax, but you only use a wax polish on the toe because you don't want to put it on the okay. areas where the shoe creases. Cause otherwise, even though this is a bit of an extreme example, it'd almost be like putting paint over a surface that moves okay it creates yeah cracks. yeah yeah so if you watch this now okay this has had um a layer of polish on it this is polishing with mr Miller gordon honestly baby you need to start doing some tutorials on this have. have you put them up yeah i've done very well have you done your maintenance routine like what you do when you come home so that you... No, because people probably think I'm a little bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> That's just had like one coat of polish. You mm -hmm. should see a slight difference. Yeah, there is a slight difference. So that's had one coat of polish and a quick buff. Like round two, so this is where... The magic happens. Yeah, so really I could I could be using um, a product in here. See, it says mirror gloss. Yeah. But, and that will help pull out a really high shine, like yeah. a mirror light shine. Yeah. But we're not trying to do that on these. It Why? It would be right on boots. Right. Slowly. Just massaging the toe. Yeah. To be honest, I don't think many of us are watching what you're doing on the boots. We're just watching your arms. <laughs> oh, yes. Mr. Puniverse over here. So we're only doing this bit mm -hmm. up to there. Ah. Yeah, up to the first crease a little bit of water yeah oh wow like this where did you get this from okay and you go one two three mm -hmm. like a bowling ball and then you just slowly because we want to create more of a shine on the toe and then slowly fade it into the shoe mm -hmm. yeah when you're doing a high shine this is you then go in the front so you go across and you go back to the toe like that mm -hmm. yeah and then you go further back, and then you go back to the toe. There's a slow build up of polish water, and you've just got a feel when it starts getting a bit rougher. Some good finger action there, babe. Yeah. You okay, gorgeous? You okay? 
You've been having a bath, haven't you? So this is Lamy's room. <laughs> the wisteria bedroom. That at the moment is unfinished. But she's claimed it as her own. She loves this little nook. Oh yes, big buzz. Big buzz. Ah, oh, small stuff. Give you a little polish if you're not careful. Give you a little polish. What are you doing? <laughs> little shrimp. Little upside down shrimpy. Please ignore my hair this morning. Actually, don't ignore it. I'm trying to get and see if it's possible. You know that like AI girl? Someone said on one of my recent uh, TikToks that I look like, I mean, I definitely don't. So please, this is not a humble brag, but they, it was a lovely compliment, but this is not a humble brag. Someone said that I look like the AI girl with the with the hair, the old money AI girl. And um, I Googled her and I was like, that's very sweet, but I really want to try and achieve her hair. And so that is what I am doing this morning. I am attempting to achieve that kind of swoosh and try and get my hair to have a little bit of hold at the roots. However, that's not why I started filming and I wouldn't normally jump on and um, film at this stage of my makeup routine, but who cares, you know, we're we're friends here. Um, I'm listening to a podcast and it is the Minimalist podcast. It's their most recent one, uh, which is called Useless Things. And there was a quote in it, which I thought was so interesting. And they said, we tend to judge other people by their behavior, but we judge ourselves by our intentions, but our intentions are invisible to other people. So say you're in a, in a car and someone cuts you up on the motorway, you judge them on their actions. So they're selfish, they're stupid, they can't drive this, that and the other. But when you cut someone up on the motorway, you know that you're just, you know, you're late to pick up your kids or you're, you're trying to get to work and you've been stuck in traffic and you, you use your intentions as means to justify the bad behavior that other people would judge you on. So that is something to be very, very mindful of, whether you're behind the wheel of your car, whether you're like in public and somebody, I don't know, cuts in front of you in a queue. I mean, usually we're all a little bit annoyed by that, but um, what we need to get better at is showing each other the grace we show ourselves because we understand our intentions. So basically think outside of the behavior and think what could they be doing that means that they need to do that. And obviously there will be people that fall outside of that. Oh, I need to put this in a curler. My bad. See, this one hasn't done the same thing. I haven't quite got enough. <laughs> Sorry for coming that close. I was grabbing this. This is the Sam McKnight um, like styling spray. Just gonna pop that like that and then I'm gonna pop this in a little curly, little Velcro roller. Like so. Et voila. Anyway, I thought that that was a really good nugget of information for me to share with you and just something to think a little bit outside of the box because I'm sure we have all done it in um, those settings, but I'm going to turn the camera off because of the dogs. on the hair we've given a little bit of volume around the face and I actually think it's worked I used the Sam McKnight um, styling spray and then I've used the three more inches um, paste and oil on the ends just to make sure it doesn't go crispy and then obviously my little rollers are from Amazon maybe I should do a little tutorial because I quite like the little swoosh it's still not as big as the AI girl but um, it's bigger than it usually is so We'll see but we're currently waiting in um, a very very big queue at the Cotswold Country Fair because we are heading to do our um, well my <laughs> author signing so I've even got a little a little sign here that says author book signings very a fish all good 
Oh my god. <laughs> just adjusting my jeans. <laughs> so funny might story. Be a bit stuck. Yes, we are literally cast up in the mud. She's in a mood with me because I said no to shopping afterwards. And there's another signing you've got to get to. Millen, sign your books. <laughs> We are just getting ready to head to the next book signing and we have just been awarded uh, from Howard who owns <laughs> Evenload Farm or Evenlo Grounds um, with the award of him having to pull us out of the mud not once, not twice, but three times. So if you know Howard, please let him know that we are forever grateful <laughs> because he is currently <laughs> doing the most right. for everyone here. He's a hero. Well, just walked up to Jaffa and Neil in Chipping Norton and this nobody is stealing space for my window. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> this is unreal. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> wow. On the move again. So I do feel like this is a bit of a moment. My book next to Jeremy Clarkson's Diddly Squat Farm book. No big deal. <laughs> I literally walked up and I was like, who's this nobody? Get him out of my window. <laughs> but we've arrived to Jaffa and Neil and I will pop a link in the description box if there are any signed copies um, available on there because I'm just about to do another signing here after doing it at the um, Cotswold Country Fair, the Christmas Country Fair. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a little bit of a tour as well. So this is my window. No big deal. And... Got this lovely little setup here. So cute. Just admiring all the other books as well. So if you don't want to come in just from for my book, there are lots of other books to come in for. So this book by Susan Ogilvy. Og Ogilvy. I um bought for Ali when we came here last time, but there's so many other wonderful books in here. We've got the Almanac and Seasonal Guide. I'm a huge fan fan of Leah Lenders, so um, she does the most amazing books. We've got the RHS Diary, so if you want one to go alongside your copy of Evergreen. Wild Escapes looks absolutely wonderful. And then we've got all of these. Oh, William Morris wrapping paper. That looks like, oh, and the oak leaf as well. How lovely. This is actually a book I want to listen to on Audible. This is... 
my autobiography. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. The Book of Wilding. Joanna Lumley. A Handbook of Hope. Wow. That sounds really lovely. Great guide and be inspired. How lovely. Honestly, every time I come here, I buy a book. And this is a book. I think I either saw this on Kate Levy's Instagram or it was Liv Purvis's Instagram stories. But um, this, not only is it a very, very beautiful cover, but this sounds like a very, very good book when it's got a little nod from Jojo Moyes. A few no novelists today combine such a forensic eye with an acute, humane understanding of human nature. I would re read, <laughs> I would read Anne Patchett's shopping list. <laughs> I love that. I'm happy to, to take it from the other end. I might just move that plant just so that we've got the most of it off. Ready to go again? Yes. Got a lot of, bo a lot of books. Lot of books. Love. Cleaning up. Done that, you know, it was like dot. My seat, my release came rugby, so I, the amount of times all I've learned is not getting in the house like that. Can we go for a world record? Do you want, I can't time it. Yeah. Oh, I see, very. I can't believe that I'm on a, 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 in a shop front with Jeremy Clarkson. Apparently, he likes Rosie. I know, that's so what I'm trying to, to know. I can definitely send him a few recommendations. Good morning. I'm just finishing off this vlog because I felt like it needed a proper ending and I needed to show you my new jumper. <laughs> it just arrived from House of Brewer. I got it in a size medium. I wanted to size up and I would actually suggest anyone sizing up because I think it's it's quite fitted and I wanted something a little bit more oversized. Um, this is to replace my sheep jumper that I shrunk in the wash, which has been devastating and I don't think I've uh, been quiet about it since it happened. Yesterday was eventful. It was uh, it was a bit of a nightmare at the f at the fair because um, of the weather. We ended up obviously getting stuck in the mud three times, which was not ideal. I think they were really really struggling um, with the logistics of everything around that. So I hope anyone that was there had a good day. I, honestly, the stalls were amazing, and it was so hard for me not to like go shopping when I was there. I mean, I did, I did buy something, but it's because there's a lady there that I get, well, in fact, I got this piece of art from her. So this is a um, antique oil painting uh, that is framed in linen, well, it's mounted in linen and then framed in a beautiful antique frame. I got this when I went to the Country Brocant at Dalesford uh, a year or so ago. And I followed her on Instagram ever since. She finds the most beautiful like antique artwork pieces with frames. Um, it just always looks so well presented. So I saw her, so as I ran past, um, I impulse purchased a new bit of artwork, which I actually think works in here as well. These frames look really lovely, but I'm hoping that these will all work in my office um, when we start work on that. But yeah, so I picked that up. Her prices have gone up though. And I was like, ah. But um, yeah, there were so many that I liked, but I, I managed to rein myself in. And then I picked up Tom Lake by Anne, Pratt, uh, by Anne Patchett from uh, Jaffa and Neil because I'm making that my tradition that I'm not allowed to go in there unless I'm buying a book. Um, so every time I buy a book and they're so sweet, every time they try to give me the book and I'm like, absolutely not. Because more than anything, I think that this journey with Evergreen has given me such a, pro a profound appreciation of the work that goes into uh, writing books, selling books, the people behind independent books, bookstores, um, the difficulties, but also like just the wonderful, sort of industry that it is to be a part of. I feel so lucky that I get to be a part of this, even just with my little book. And yesterday was really special because being at um, the, Cotswold the Cotswold Christmas Country Fair, I think it was, it was called, um, 
with Borzoi Bookstore, which is the Chipping Camden Bookstore. For me, it's now, I think I've said this already, but it's about getting evergreen outside of you wonderful people. I know that you guys are just so passionately supportive and you help you have just changed the game with this book and now i'm really hoping that it reaches outside of that and starts reaching people that maybe don't know me that has like started to sort of trickle in um i've had a few business owners and ceos of brands that i really admire who have written to me to say that they have um read evergreen and loved it and so that is when you're like oh my god <laughs> oh my god like then you're not even following me this is amazing so yeah i think that um now it's all about sort of reaching new people so it was outside of my comfort comfort zone yesterday as much as i meet so many of you there there was a lot of people that maybe aren't my audience and um it was interesting and it was wonderful and it was such a unique experience so yes loved every moment of it and um yeah i thought i'd just give you a bit of a, a brief and a lowdown but i'm gonna end this vlog here because i think it's gonna be quite long and jump into my next video